Alright guys, um, the time has finally come. We're on episode 13 of the Java Game Development Tutorial Series and we are actually beginning to program the real actual part of the game. Um, we're done with the menus and yes, this moment is finally coming true. Um, okay, I shouldn't make a drama out of this, but we're actually beginning right now. So, what we want to happen is that, actually, let me just start up the game for it again. Um, and there it is. There. Always these long pauses because of my computer super speed. So what we want to happen is when we click the play button and we choose a level here, blah blah blah, which are of course like this not really real. <laughs> Um, and then we click play, we are going to switch to the game screen and then it loads the level and everything is going to be awesome. Um, right now we don't care which of these levels here um, the player selected, we just want to get some basic stuff going on. And the first thing that we have to learn is Box2D. So Box2D is the physics engine that is going to take care of a lot of stuff in our game. Um, yeah, it's it's used in many 2D games. I think Angry Birds, I don't know. I have no idea what's actually using it, but it's used a lot. T yeah, let's get just started and create a new class. Actually, we want to create a new screen. And he already guessed it. And there it is. So let's actually call that game. Um, and we have to go in the level menu and go to the text button play and give this guy a listener play dot add listener new click listener clicked override that and we're gonna say we wanna get the game from gdx dot app dot get application listener which is a game and you know all of that and then we want to set the screen to a new game. This is where the magic begins. Okay. Um, what kind of problem is he having right now? Important stuff, so fine. Cut it and send it to. Oh, yeah. He's thinking of this game, but I'm talking about. Okay. Actually, we are getting name compatibility issues here. Let's rename this to play. I don't really like this name, but at least we know what we are talking about like this. So we want to create a new play. A new... okay, a new play. Um, like I said, right now we don't care what's selected in this list right here, so we'll take care of that later. Let's actually start this stuff right now. So Box2T is actually wrapped into libgdx already. Um, you could download jbox2d and include that in your project, but that's pretty much just unnecessary. Because Box2D is written in C++ and we are coding in Java, so uh, the, the guys from libgdx used J and I to kind of run that native code with some stuff that I don't even understand and blah blah blah. We just want to take care of the um yeah of the implementation in our game so that's all in the wrapped box to the classes from the GDX. you understand what i mean so let's just get started and we want to create a new world where all of that is happening in so world is already part of this box to the thing is here we go com dot bad logic dot gdx dot physics dot box to the dot world so in Box2D in C++ there would be a class called something like B2World because they just put this prefix B2 before um, all of their class names. But we are in GX and it's just called World, so it's easy to understand. Also, we want something to actually render this world and that's going to be a Box2D debug renderer, uh, which I'm going to call debug renderer. Yep. So the debug renderer is not 
um, there anymore when we want to play the game because it's like uh, the name says debug renderer and that's pretty yeah it's just drawing some lines where the bodies are and everything beca because Box2D is really a pure physics engine there is nothing going on with drawing stuff on the screen and we have to take care of all of that um, the only thing that Box2D cares about is stuff colliding and moving and gravity and stuff like that so this box to debug render is just there to draw stuff when we don't draw stuff ourselves. Um, I'm talking too much. Let's create the world. And there is already the first thing that we have to learn. So the world constructor takes two things. The first thing is a vector2. What? Yep, a vector2. I'll just create that thing right now and tell you what it is in just a minute. So at first, it, uh, vector2 is basically just holding an x and y value. Actually, that's all that we need to know. It's having some methods for calculation, and it's holding an x and y value. There's also a vector3 class, which holds x, y, and z for 3D, but we are in box 2D, so we want a uh, vector2. d a vector two. Okay, so the x value is going to be 0, because they're trolling me, because... Um, Hell. Whatever. Yep. Because this is a gravity vector, so th uh, this is this thing is the gravity that's going to be in this world. And on Earth here we don't have gravity in the x direction, we just have a gravity downwards. So zero and the gravity downwards, which is pretty much the same on this all, all places on Earth, it differs a little bit, but who cares? Is around 9.81. Newton. This is actually going in Newton. Box2D is not measuring anything in pixels, it's not measuring anything in... I don't know, just floats. I, it's using Newton and meters. Um, so we have to be aware of that because we cannot just take things from Box2D and put them into the rendering stuff. We have to convert. But that will happen later. So the, f uh, the second thing is a boolean if we want to allow sleeping or not and th that's just like if the bodies that are inactive that's just chilling around some stone on some hill if that body is allowed to sleep and not be calculated every step and we say yes as long as we don't have any problems with this it's good to say yes it saves us some computing power um, so now let's get the uh, debug render and well that's really simple and we're done usually. We're done. Box 2, oops, I forgot a D here. So now we're actually done. Um, just to make this a little bit more clear, let's go into the Vector2 class. And we see it's got a bunch of stuff. All of this, blah 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 blah. It's all just methods to, yeah, do some calculation because we need a lot of calculation, or at least box D needs a lot of calculation. That's the only thing it's doing. But for all that we need to know, uh, yeah, all that we need to know is these two variables, a public float x and a public float y, and like I said, these are the x and y values. We could also have a look at the vector 3, which is essentially the same, just with x, y, and z for 3D space. So, cool. Um, now it's getting interesting, because we need some, some, some crazy stuff. Um, let's create a ca uh, uh, yeah, come on, let's create a camera up here, private, and there are, there are different kinds of cameras, um, we are going to use an orthographic camera, which just means like, looking at paper, 2D, plain, orthographic, um, because it's for 2D, but, yeah, whatever, it's just an orth orthographic camera, okay. you could look up, um, in the internet what kind of different cameras they are and they all have oh, shut up they all have um, different properties when getting the projection matrix and the view matrix and the transformed and the combined matrix so what the hell am I talking about this is some stuff for rendering and yeah like a camera let's let's you get the idea it's taken care of how big things are on the screen where 
we draw them on the screen because we can move the camera around without actually having to move the objects around. Um, and yes, I'll just set that up and explain it to you. So the camera is going to be a new ortho shit orthographic camera, and it's taking gdx dot graphics dot get with and yes gdx dot graphics dot get height. So this is just an orthographic camera which has the viewport width and height of yeah pretty much the screen that we're drawing on. Um, so everything is going to be scaled one to one, the exact same scale ratio and it's at the moment all how we had it before. Um, now the interesting thing is that in the render method we are actually making use of the camera but at first we'll use um, GL clear color and stuff that we already know. GDX.GL GL clear. GL twenty oh dot GL color. Buffer a bit, cool. Um now let's make use of the debug render because we can put everything in the world. We don't care if we don't see it. So we tell the beat debug renderer to render. So this is taken the world that it's supposed to render, and we just give it this world. And now we are like, what? Matrix 4? Projection matrix? What the hell? Um, this is pretty much just from the camera. So let's say camera dot, and then it has some uh, final, that's why the F is there all the time. Um, yeah, some, some final um, matrix 4s. <laughs> so yeah, here's, um, here's a combined one. We got a bunch um, of views that we can use the inf projection view which is the inverse combined projection and view matrix the projection view uh, the projection matrix the view matrix oh god i don't even want to start talking about this we are just taking the combined matrix because this let's let's just think of that thing combines all the good things that we need it puts them together so that everything is going to be all right um yes <laughs> we are going to use just the combined matrix um I think. So what the hell did we just do? We created a new world and this new world from box 2 takes a vector2 which is not from box 2 but libgdx uses it for box 2 things with this um, box 2 wrapped into libgdx stuff that I was talking about earlier and we gave this vector2 an x value of 0 and for gravity a y value of minus 9.81f which is the gravity on earth and then we say as long as we don't have any problems with it just allow bodies in this world to sleep which will be cool for the computing power saving oh i can't talk today anyway here's the debug render we just create that thing absolutely complicated and then we say render and we give it the world and then it says, dude, I need a camera, a, a matrix 4. <laughs> yeah, don't care about what a matrix 4 is, it's just mathematics. Um, and we say, okay, this camera here gives you that. And we say the camera.combined, which is a matrix 4, is what you want to use to render stuff on the screen in the correct way. So he asks the camera to give him that thing and this is an orthographic camera um, using a viewport height of yeah the screen height and a viewport width of the screen width and I just set height here and width there but whatever um, by setting this to GDX or graphics to get width and get height we render stuff in a one to one ratio so we could also say we divide these by 5 or something and then would actually be a 5 to 1 ratio or a 1 to 5? I think it's 5 to 1. Anyway, we are not doing this right now. Um, okay, we always forget important stuff like disposing. So world.dispose debug renderer.dispose 
and camera dot this nope that doesn't exist um in the height we want to call this pose because when we switch the screen it calls height and we are actually done with the screen then so we want to dispose of stuff I talked about that you know what I'm talking about hopefully and yeah we can we don't have to but we actually can run this and be absolutely amazed by seeing yep you already guessed it by seeing nothing amazing um, this is because there is nothing in the world yet so yeah just relax a minute hopefully you got all of this we still got what we already recorded 15 minutes <laughs> okay well since you already recorded 15 minutes um, and this is really not much yeah let's just say I'm sorry and I'm just recording the next tutorial right now where we're going to create the first actually thing in this world we're going to set up a ground and we're going to set up let's say a ball or some other shape that falls down and yeah stays on the ground um, okay then see you in the next tutorial which is gonna be in a few minutes <laughs> and have a good day